Hello, everyone. Welcome to the FDIP, the official podcast of the Faculty Development and Innovation Center at EIU. I'm Kim Irvin, an instructional designer and your host for this episode. This podcast series aims to illuminate the path to teaching excellence by sharing insights into instructional design, teaching strategies, and innovation. In this episode, I will spotlight the teaching strategy of prediction, what it is, how it can be used in your instruction, and why it works. What will the weather be like this weekend? What will the stock market do this next quarter? Who will win the World Series? These are questions about events in the future, and their outcomes have yet to be determined. However, I may have enough knowledge to make an educated guess. Another term for educated guess is predicting. Merriam-Webster defines the word predict to declare or indicate in advance, especially foretell on the basis of observation, experience, or scientific reason. What does prediction have to do with teaching and learning? Prediction is a teaching strategy researched and supported in the learning sciences. Research has shown that asking learners to predict an outcome on a topic not yet taught can improve retention of the topic related to the prediction. For example, pretend you are a learner in a physics class and your instructor is about to lecture for the first time on the concept of fluid mechanics or the flow of fluids. Before the lecture, the instructor shows your class an image of four water tanks, variously arranged and all connected for the flow of fluids between them. Water will only be poured into one of these tanks. Now to recap the image, there's four water tanks, all variously connected with piping. The tanks are at various levels, meaning some higher, some lower than others, and water is poured in only one tank. The question the instructor poses to you and your classmates is, which tank will be full first? After you and your classmates submit an answer, your instructor shares that the correct answer will be revealed within their lecture. Now, as an instructor, you may be thinking the order of these activities feels unnatural because an operating assumption can be first teach the learners the material then ask them to answer questions or solve problems with it. However, learning research suggests something quite different. In his book, Small Teaching, Second Edition, James Lang shares that asking learners to use their existing knowledge and skills to struggle with material before it is taught can provide a robust foundation for deeper learning. And providing learners with this purposeful struggle doesn't require a course redesign. Just a few minutes at the beginning of class or unit in a face-to-face or online course has potential to improve learning. So time out for a couple seconds. Why exactly does the prediction teaching strategy work? Why can prediction activities improve learning? Well, let's quickly break down the prediction process that goes on in our brains so we can understand why it is effective in learning. The cycle our brains go through when it encounters a prediction is first generate a prediction, then experience the actual outcome, then detect errors in the prediction, then correctively remodel, and finally make the correction to the prediction. So it's generate a prediction, experience the actual outcome, detect errors, correctively remodel, make the correction. It is the corrective remodeling stage in this cycle that makes prediction effective in learning. Corrective remodeling exposes missing or incorrect knowledge in a way that intrinsically motivates the filling or repairing of understanding. That intrinsic motivation causes us to want to pay closer attention than we otherwise might because we want to know if our prediction was correct. Intrinsic motivation hooks our emotion into what the prediction is about An emotion has power to focus attention and give us a quick cognitive boost. Now let's think back to the prediction teaching strategy mentioned earlier. Which tank will be full first? What effect did that scenario have on your intrinsic motivation 
to engage with the instructor's forthcoming lecture. Granted, we are all motivated differently, but I'm willing to predict that at least some of you are thinking, well, the effect it had on me is that it motivated me to want to pay closer attention to the lecture to find out if my answer was correct. And just in case your intrinsic motivation has you curious, there is a link to a video in the show notes that explains the answer. One closing thought, as much as the prediction teaching strategy may work to help improve learning for you and I, it may not work for all of your learners. As humans, we are all intrinsically motivated by different means. The words of advice I offer when using prediction in your instruction is to be transparent with your learners about why you're using prediction activities, because research shows it can help learning, Gauge your learner's reaction to your prediction activities. Ask your learners if they enjoy them. And finally, any teaching strategy can be overused. So always diversify your teaching strategies to increase impact. If you'd like to brainstorm how you can incorporate the use of prediction in your teaching, feel free to reach out to me at 217-581-3716 or at ksarvin at eiu.edu. Thanks for listening, and most importantly, thanks for continuing to learn.